Well, good morning, everybody. It is time for another segment of Back with the Bishop. And while the notifications are going out, let me send out our birthday shout outs to uh, Miss Bernadine Roberts, to Erica Dixon, to Vera Briggs, to Lozana. Williams and to my cousin, Mr. Hurley McHenry Jr. And if today is your birthday, I pray that your day is filled with many blessings, gifts, and love from all around and that you enjoy as many of the sweet things as you desire. Just don't make yourself sick, all right? It is another terrific Tuesday. And as I said, it is time for another segment of Back with the Bishop. And if this is your first time watching one of these broadcasts, I want you to know that they are to encourage you, to empower you, to educate you, to motivate you, to inspire you, and to uplift you to move towards your destiny, operating in the purpose for which you've been created using the gifts that are within you. I am thankful and grateful that you have tuned into this broadcast. I was making sure that my uh, little timer was going because I don't want to go beyond a certain amount of time. But anyway, I am thankful that you have chosen to be a part of this broadcast. It means a great deal to me um, for all of you who have tapped in, tuned in, who have shared and liked and commented and uh, given red and blue dots uh, for uh, these broadcasts, it means a, a great deal to me. And I just want to let you all know that I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart for being a part of the Pastor Lou Live. Again, the Back with the Bishop Live. I'm, I'm still saying the Pastor Lou Live. I'm so used to saying that. We've been saying that for almost two years now. But for Back with the Bishop, uh, being a part of this family. And um, I always pray that you receive something that up, uh, that encourages you. It really does uplift you, that speaks to your heart, speaks to your situation where you are. And so um, as we have been formally known as Pastor Lou Live, we are now known as Back with the Bishop. And that is because I was uh, elevated to the office of the bishopric, consecrated into the office of the bishopric on this past Saturday. And I want to say thank you so very much to all of you who have been prayerful, for those of you who have supported, for all of you who have sent cash apps, um, for those of you who have given through PayPal, for those of you who have given meals, again, phone calls, texts, and comments, and emails, all of your love and support has helped me to get to that place, that moment of being consecrated into the office of the bishopric. And to be honest with you, it is still um, somewhat of a surreal moment to me um, because it is not anything that I saw after. It wasn't anything that I was praying for, you know, Lord, make me a bishop, consecrate me a bishop, because it is a great responsibility. It's a great way. And uh, just living my own life, it is uh, already weighty enough. It's already challenging enough. And so you add more layers on top of that when you start to function in ministry and you start serving uh, in the kingdom. And so accepting this office and this elevation is not just a title for me, but it requires more of me. And that's one of the things that I was very aware of. And so that mean for me that I could not go into it easily, could not go into it lightly. And so there was much prayer and much fasting that I had to do. And there was much um, that the Lord had to work on my heart uh, to be able to even receive such an elevation. And I thank God that he saw fit again to choose me to operate in such a place. And uh, I am grateful to serve in the ranks of my co-laborers, Bishop Damian Dean, Bishop David Stevens, and Bishop Linda Moss, as well as uh, those who have been forerunners who have been serving in this position and in this office for quite some time. And my own very pastor, Apostle Dr. Russell Larry Freeman, uh, I just want to say thank you. And for any of you who may be a part of United Community Cathedral, I want to say thank you so very much because you all have poured so much into my life and have empowered me to be able to even operate in such a place. And so from here we go up and what we've been saying all year long, hello 2019, I'm going up. I'm speaking it over your life and my life as well. And so um, I believe that God is going to do big things for me and I believe he's going to do big things for you. Uh, our 2019 is filled with big things. So if you believe it, you receive it accept it, put it in the comment section. 2019 is filled with big things for me. And so I am just thankful that God is honoring his word and he's bringing manifestation into the lives of his children. And so with that being said, my time is, my time is up. I wanted to speak to us uh, here today. This week, we're going to be dealing with healing. And we're going to be dealing with um, brokenheartedness. Um, the scripture says um, in Psalm 147 and 3 that he heals the brokenhearted and he bandages or binds up their wounds. And one of the things that um, I've been meditating on over the last several days is just 
how God brings in healing. And sometimes there are situations that occur that we cannot control, but they affect us very deeply. And so I'm going to say that again, there are situations that occur in our life that we cannot control, but they affect us very deeply. And so sometimes there are things that people will say, things that people will do. Again, you cannot control that. But what they say and what they do, it affects you very deeply. And sometimes it hurts, it stings, you know, it causes anger, it causes frustration. But most oftentimes dealing with uh, this week specifically when it actually hurts. And one of the things I think that we as humans, we want to do is we don't want to hurt. And so sometimes we try to ignore it. We try to reject it. We try to suppress it. And what I have learned is that we have to embrace it. Yes, something has been said, something has done, something has hurt us. It has offended us. It has broken something within us. It has caused um, us to move to a place or to experience pain. And so what we must do is embrace that pain because if we don't embrace the pain, if we don't embrace the hurt, then we can never ever move to a place called healing. We'll never be able to accept and embrace healing. So we have to understand and know what it is to hurt so that we can know what it is to receive healing and then be able to share and give that healing to others. And so the psalmist began to sing, and I love it because he's saying that um, he healed the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. And so I was reminded of an old song that Dwayne Woods sang and recorded and released called God Still Heals. And I'm going to try to see if I can find that song and be able to play it on the broadcast this week. But uh, he wrote a song called God Still Heals. And there are people that are hurting all around the world in various situations, various catalysts uh, that have caused hurt in the lives of people. And I just want to encourage you and I want to speak this word over your life and I want to remind you that God still heals. So no matter where you may be hurting, it may be in a relationship with a family member, with a friend, maybe um, something maybe didn't go the way that you expected it to go on your job um, or in your business endeavor, in your ministry, in your career, in your uh, academics. And it hurt you. It hurt. But I want to let you know that God still heals. The psalmist says that he heals the broken heart and he binds up their wounds. So that means, you know, sometimes things break us into many different pieces. But what God does is he has this way of taking every piece of us that has been broken, that has been shattered, and he's able to put it back together again. It's Dante Bowie that wrote a song. It's called Potter and Friend. And it says that God takes broken things and he makes them beautiful. I'm going to turn it up. I'm playing it a little bit. And he makes them whole again. And so I want to let you know that you can be healed I want to let you know that you can be whole again and you can smile again and you can experience joy. You can experience peace again when you allow God to heal you. And so, again, one of the things we can't control, you know, I was thinking about this, but it affects us deeply is oxygen. We don't control the air in this atmosphere, in this three dimensional world, but we need it. And so if we were to take it away, it would gravely hurt us. It would gravely affect us. We can't control it, but we need it. And thank God that he has made it available to us in an ample amount so that we never, ever run out. And so I want to pray for you all before I go. I've got just a few more minutes. And so I want to pray for you uh, and for anybody that may be hurting and share this with your family members and with your friends because people are hurting all around the world. And and God gave me a song called Healing for the Nation. And um, I wrote it based out of Second Chronicles uh, 7 and 14, where he says, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. And so it's a, a song and it's a prayer of healing for the people of God. And so I just want to pray, Father, in Jesus name, I thank you for this opportunity to come before your presence. And I pray for your people, Lord, all around the world that are hurting right now. And I pray for healing in the name of Jesus, Father, for you said in your word that you will heal the brokenhearted and that you will bind up our wounds. And so, Father, we pray that you would do just that, that you will honor your word because we have all been affected by situations that we cannot control. And we know that you are in control of all things at all times and nothing catches you off guard. But sometimes things catch us off guard. Sometimes things come to us unexpectedly and they hurt us. Things that people say, things that people do. And so, Father, I pray for healing now in our mind. I pray for healing in our emotions, God, healing in our heart, God 
by healing in our body in the name of Jesus. There are those who have been plagued by sickness and disease. And Lord, I just rebuke it in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus against every sickness and disease that is trying to physically and mentally and spiritually, emotionally plague your people in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray that you will honor your word and let your healing virtue flow now. From the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet, I pray that you cause us to smile again, cause us to laugh again, cause us to love again, cause us to seek your face again and to worship you with our whole hearts. In the name of Jesus. And I pray that you will heal and restore what has been broken. Heal and restore the relationships, God. Heal and restore our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. I pray that you've received that. I pray that you've been encouraged, that you've been blessed. And again, I speak healing into your life. I speak healing in your mind, healing in your emotions, healing in your finances, healing in your marriages, healing in your relationships with your children, with your family members, with your friends. I pray for healing in your career healing in your academics in the name of Jesus. I love you all. I pray that you've been encouraged, empowered, educated, motivated, inspired, and uplifted to move towards your destiny, operating in the purpose for which you've been created, using the gifts that are within you. I'm signing off by saying, hello, 2019. <laughs> I'm going up and so are you. And what's to come for you and for me is better than what's been, Matt Love. <laughs>